Hello, 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 hello. Welcome to part four. So in this part, well, we'll be doing what you what you see on the screen right now. And let me kind of break it down to you and let me explain what is it that you're looking at. So here we have, uh, let's call it a city, a voxel city that's grown uh, with a very simple rule set. Every time a block is placed, it checks if it's blocking the sun for all previous blocks that were already there to begin with and if any of the previously placed blocks doesn't get at least i think in this case three hours of sunlight per day um, then that particular block will not get placed right and and thus the city gets grown why do we do this well we do this because um in our previous uh episode tutorial part of the series we uh, created a structure a custom martian cube structure and we imported it into unreal engine um, but the problem with it was that the underlying point cloud of the um, custom martian cube structure was just a donut shape or a random point cloud doesn't matter right it didn't have um like good enough rule set to be implemented so this i think is a very good rule set to use when designing for in this case sun for livability right of course it makes some weird weird areas here and there but that is normal right that that is something that we haven't coded in and it does whatever it can to minimize the amount of shade so what I'm getting at it is every single box here receives at least three hours of sunlight, right? You can only simulate that. You can't design that. All right. So let's, let's start doing this. I'll, I'll stop that. Uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is I will create a landscape right we need a landscape so here you can either import a landscape that you already have or you know or or, or you can just get a displacement map <clears throat> so there's plenty of resources on the internet for displacement maps and there is one that i have just um, downloaded let me try and see where is it is it here yeah this this height map right here right i will be uh, uploading it to as per usual to patreon supporters but this is a free map that you can just find on the internet if you search for landscape height map it has a pretty high resolution right and it's 16 bit meaning that the grayscale gradient is quite uh, dense right um then to create a terrain from a height map, uh, there's two possibilities. One is using a displacement in Rhino. And actually, let me... How do you do this? Let us create a new file. Yeah, that's going to be the best. Completely new file. File... Uh, new... No no template let's just create a completely new file and also uh, we don't need grasshopper just yet our grasshopper script blend new canvas right so creating the landscape first things first units what kind of units do we use i will go to the i will type in units into the command line and here i will change from millimeters to centimeters centimeters is something that we use will use throughout the whole project so keep that in mind centimeters i hit ok and now we're we're in centimeters so in terms of creating the landscape in rhino from a displacement map all you need to do is just create a rectangle so i'll uh, i'm creating i'm drawing a rectangle from zero and i'll I'll say one kilometer, you know, one by one kilometer. Maybe that's going to be good enough of a, of a size. 
So one by one kilometer means uh, in centimeters. Um, so that's a, 100 centimeters is a meter. So I need three more zeros. That's going to be a kilometer. One, two, three. There we go. Enter. And then enter to repeat. Now we have one by one kilometer rectangle. I'll just create a planner surface in it real quick. Delete the rectangle. Take a look at it. Here it is. And then here we can actually use... Um, if, if you select your surface, you can go to its properties tab on the right hand side and choose this displacement uh, option, I guess, or tab where you can turn on the displacement and you can create a new uh, assign a te texture, right? So I'm just going to click to assign texture, create a new texture. Uh, here I'll say that it's a bitmap. Is there like a better one? high dynamic range texture i really want to change uh, to look at this one but uh, for now i'm, I'm going to show you the default uh, bitmap texture right we choose that we navigate to our height map hit click to open it opens up doesn't really show and that's because the the, the, the white point is set to be one uh, centimeter high, right? So I need to change the white point to be a little bit higher. Uh, let's go for 10 meters, a thousand centimeters. You can see some things are starting to appear, right? So let's go for a hundred meters. Uh, God damn it. Like that, 10,000. There we go. We're, we're getting the landscape in here now. Um, let's increase this even more. Let's say five times more. Something like that. <clears throat> there we go. That looks like a mountain. A very low resolution mountain. <laughs> but uh, to fix that, we just change the quality from medium to, let's say, high. Right? This is a bit better. You can go for very high. It might freak out. It didn't. Um, and at this point, at this point, you will see why we will be using Blender <laughs> rather than uh, Rhino for this. Some, something's beeping. Just a second. Okay, we're back. So that kind of stair stepping effect that you see here on the landscape that happens because I I believe <clears throat> it's because. Um, the, the, the Rhino doesn't understand 8-bit or 16-bit textures. It only understands 8-bit, so it doesn't have enough um, height information to work on this. That's my guess. It, I might be completely wrong about this. Um, so that's why I was quite interested to see if we create a new texture and we choose um, HDR texture. No, never mind. It only reads EXR or HDRI, so that, that won't work. Okay, never mind. So with Rhino, you get stair stepping, this, this kind of stair stepping effect. We don't use that. Let's delete. In Blender, which is a free software that you can just download, right? In Blender, let's get, uh, get rid of everything. So let me just see if I can. I don't have it here. Okay, so press A and hit delete, right? So you basically just clean up everything. You delete all, all of the objects in the scene. This is by default, uh, by the way, the default viewport, you know, a default new file. Uh, then shift A to create a new object and shift A under mesh, click on plane that will create a rectangular plane for you. And we don't really need to change the size of it. We'll change it back in Rhino. So I'll, I'll leave it as it is. Um, then one thing that we need to be... Can I... 
there we go. Uh, one thing that uh, we need to be very kind of careful about is the polygon count. So we need to always keep um, keep track of our polygons. So I'm going to go here in the top. Um, I'll, I'll click this overlay, uh, small little arrow, and here I'll choose statistics. Statistics. Uh, w once I tick mark statistics, it shows me the well the statistics of the viewport how many polygons do we see right so in this case it's one one phase right that's great uh that means that now we will be able to add a displacement modifier to this and start uh, dividing up adding more and more polygons so to explain why we need a lot of polygons is basically that's the resolution at which the mesh is going to be displaced right so more polygons you have the more accurate it's going to be so we need to um, select this object on the right hand side um, you click on this uh, wrench icon that's the modifi modifiers tab and you slap on a modifier that's called subdivision subdivision surface that one here it will try to smooth it out you don't want that so you choose simple and you increase the levels of subdivision in the viewport to whatever uh, six i think six is the maximum yes six is the maximum with that we have reached four thousand faces right so this thing was or thing this surface was subdivided uh six times uh, into four four thousand faces right so it's basically like a grid once you've done that you can just click on this little um, arrow here and click to apply and basically you've just said that this modified mesh is now the you know the correct mesh the actual mesh that we're going to be using okay good we will slap on the modifier again subdivision surface and now you can see that with each subdivision we're almost we're not almost but we are um doubling tripling qu qu quadrupling quad multiplying it by four multiplying the amount of faces by four so as i am increasing here you can see that the rate of increase of uh, polygon count is exponential so for now let's get close to a million there we go a million faces and let's leave it as it is right so a million faces great also a not catmull clark simple subdivision because we want the corners to be sharp okay good once this is done i will just make this a little bit smaller now i'm not gonna touch it anymore i'll add another modifier that's gonna be called uh, uh, something about displacement deform displace there we go this one displace um and it basically asks us to give it a texture right as as rhino did as well so i click on new new texture is made right and here i click on this uh how is it called show texture in the texture tab sure i i click on this this icon right here bam so now we're in the texture editing mode like not editing mode but basically we can change a few things about the texture such as mapping and so on uh for now i'm just going to open it right open and i'll find it where, where wherever i've saved my my displacement map uh, is it come on there we go terrain height map open image kablamo <laughs> immediately does does the trick right a little bit too heavy uh, in terms of too, uh, a little bit too high but we'll fix that notice how there's no stair stepping here like everything is like the resolution could be better uh, and i'll show you how it's gonna look like with a higher resolution but uh, other than that this is a very good uh, you know very very good quality no stair stepping whatsoever um so under is it under mapping sampling wait wait just a second straight
yeah okay so it's it's gonna be a few oh you can't see it Whoop. let's go here so a few things to change about the texture we don't want to get the whole damn um mountain in here we only need a portion of the mountain right so to get that texture in i'm going to crop uh, to only to get the, the the portion of the mountain in here i'm going to crop the texture and we'll do that uh, through the settings here so under mapping let, let, let's do it like that under mapping under crop here in the bottom there is minimum and maximum uh, values right so what happens when i do minimum crop to increase that to 0 0.2 see it crops away that that side then 0 0.2 here crops away this side right then what if i change the maximum to 0 0.5 crops that 0 0.5 crops that this is basically how, how it works right so i'm going to try and position it on the side of the mountain so let's go for 0 0.3 by the way, these uh, minimum values and maximum values need to match up because we're dealing with a rectangle. So these need to be like X and Y in minimum and X and Y in maximum need to be the same number. So 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.7, 0 0.7, whatever, right? So let's try 0 0.6, 0 0.6. Yeah, hell yeah. That I, I think that's that's a good portion of the landscape to, to deal with. All right, so so we're going to be working on this and you can see the resolution is not that bad right so now to get back to our modifier tab i click on this wrench again bam we're back here where we have displacement texture and here we can play around with the strength and the mid level so first things first the mid level needs to be at zero because it tries to kind of equalize it so that the middle of the mountain is at zero 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 no 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 we want this little point to be at zero 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 and then for the height of the mountain that's literally the strength so everything is kind of proportion based so 0 0.5 will make will do half the strength right uh 0 0.666 will be actually yeah that that's close that's close I, I'll, I'll i'll use that I'll use that and that is honestly it right we have ourselves a displacement map oh yeah and um, i can show you so we have like two modifiers stacked i can show you under subdivision i'll just increase it once so that i'll have four million faces just to show you oh, that if i increase it from a million to four million the quality doesn't increase that much and that's because we're reaching the resolution of the image right so all of these things are, are like pixels at this point right so we, we won't get any additional additional resolution from it and we don't really need to so i'll, I'll turn this back to uh, four how does three look like eh, three three really kind of is low res so let's do four Okay, once this is done, I'll apply first the subdivision modifier, apply, and then I'll apply the displacement modifier, and now we have ourselves a mesh that we can file, export, obj, we use obj format, and I'll just export it as my landscape.obj, right? I've already done that, so I won't be exporting a se separate one. That would be weird. But basically, here it is. We, we have it. Okay, close that. Don't save. And then in our Rhino file, I'll just create a new um, layer. Call it Landscape Mesh. And make it my active layer. File, import. find my obj file there, there we go that's the landscape <clears throat> also available for patreon supporters <laughs> 
and it gets imported <clears throat> it's a million polygon mesh so of, co of course it's going to take a while uh, to get it imported but here it is um, let's zoom into it and it gets imported all weird and all you know kind of messed up that's fine i will just take this rotate it also it, it imports very small it's like two centimeters wide that's fine as well i'll take this and uh, first things first let's scale it up so if i create a bounding box for for this and i select both of them and i scale between this point and this point i can choose how big the landscape is right and in this case we are using like um, how do you call it like everything's a proportion based it's not a unit based because we use the texture and we use blender and so on in your case your landscape might be in the very you know accurate and correct state here i'm just playing a guessing game so i'll just write um let's go for two kilometers so wait um two kilometers is two thousand meters and two thousand meters is we need two more zeros for centimeters okay two hundred thousand centimeters enter that's it it gets scaled up all right so once that is done <clears throat> once once that is done then we need to what do we do I guess we can start working on the on our grasshopper script huh because we have the landscape so let, yeah let's let's start working on the grasshopper script so first things first is in grasshopper um we need to say we can't use the whole damn mesh but uh, we, we need to kind of cut away a portion of it and only work in that particular portion and let's say for for this testing purpose i'll, I'll use like a 500 by 500 uh, meter area just to make it faster so i'll create a rectangle that's 500 enter by 500 well sorry that's centimeters uh, 500 meters would be 500 so 50,000 by 50,000 drag it where I am interested in this somewhere here and the trick let's actually do, do it in the top view shade it mm, that, that's a nice area so let, let's work there uh, or that that's even nicer let's work there so the, the the interesting bit is that we need this rectangle the bottom left corner of the rectangle to be at zero 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 because we'll be building a grid from it and so on it's going to be the whole thing we need it to be at zero 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 so how do we do that Mm. well we we can just simply okay let's let's do it brute force uh, we can just simply select everything move from here from this point to zero right so now our rectangle right here is at zero 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 and our landscape is kind of situated right above it that that should be fine that should be fine okay now let's reference in our stuff into um, into Grasshopper. So I'll create a curve component right here, and I'll create my landscape uh, a component for my landscape, which is a mesh. By the way, if you don't like to see the mesh edges, as I don't, right? Let me hide this. If you want to see a mesh like so, you can change the display settings right here under mesh wires, you tick those off, right? So display settings. If you don't see display settings, um, then you click on this little gear icon here 
and you choose display and then you will see it and then you untick it and then you don't see the wires okay that's sorted so we have a mesh and we have the curve and let me hide the mesh in rhino or rather we don't even need to hide it we can just change the landscape mesh icon uh like layer state um but before i do that i will take the curve and i'll move this into its own little layer and call it curves I'll, I'll, I'll just have a layer named curves and disable both layers the preview of both layers so that we only see the the, the, the rhino version <clears throat> the grasshopper version um under in grasshopper under display i'll choose to not preview the mesh wires just now so display preview mesh wires or mesh edges turn that off we have a mesh we have a curve okay so for the curve i will hmm so since our curve sorry i i i need to think about this for for a second basically here I want to create a grid of points i want to project those points onto the mesh oh sorry not onto the mesh i want to project them onto the uh, yeah onto the mesh onto the landscape mesh and then rebuild the surface from them so let's create a grid of points divide surface so that curve since it's planner it's going to be red as a surface so we just divide it and let's do like a resolution of 100 by 100 something like that that should be good enough well maybe 250 oops yeah something like that 250 points uh 200 <laughs> sorry uh 200 points in each direction okay we we get ourselves the points let's get them into by the way this is an advanced tutorial just so you know let's flatten the list out um and and get them all in the same happy list and let's project come on project those points onto the mesh right so the points will be projected onto the mesh along the z direction because you know our our grid of points is below the mesh so they need to be projected upwards so z upwards they get projected there they are okay let's hide the original grid now this is what we're going to be dealing with right and from these points i need to create a surface so i'll just use surface from points command surface from points um points go in here the projected points go into the p input oh um how is it called what do you like uh bifocals you like bifocals so let's look at look at it with bifocals there we go surface from points um uh, goes into p uh u and i i we don't care about u is basically how many points do you have along this edge and since we're using divide surface it gives us one extra point for each row uh, so it's actually going to be 200 plus addition plus one so it actually gives us 201 points right connect that we get ourselves a surface let's hide everything and this is the surface that we're going to be dealing with right 500 by 500 um centimeters uh, sorry um da -da -da. let me just create an empty surface component and just connect it that way so that you uh, so that it's pretty clear what's what's um what we're getting and let's just group everything and call this group rebuild um, landscape okay so now we have this uh this surface here i am going to say um basically i want to have a possibility 
to draw a curve here. Let's say here. Oh, that's that's an ugly curve. That's better. Uh, to draw a curve here and to say that um, in a grid, right, we're, we're using the 10 meter grid for everything we do, right? So in a grid of 10 by 10 meters, get the points that are on the surface that are in this boundary on the surface as close as possible to um, to, to the surface of the mesh, right? So basically we, we want to have like a stair stepped grid along this landscape of, uh, of points. That is going to be our kind of foundation for the city to grow from. And everything is going to be in a grid of a thousand centimeters. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, um, we will need to... Let's think. So we need to create for sure um, some sort of a some sort of a grid first, right? So I'm just going to create a bounding box on the uh, uh, around the surface. <clears throat> then I'm going to take um, let's say this point and this point from the bounding box. So we'll use evaluate box command twice actually and I'm a, I'm gonna evaluate the bounding box at coordinates 0, 0, 0. that's gonna be easy so I'm just creating a zero uh, number u v w zero 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 is that point and then the next point will be one zero zero right it's all proportion based, right? So U is one and V and W is gonna be zero and zero, like that. Um, if, if it's not clear, uh, just think of it this way. Um, you, have, you have U direction, um, you have V direction and you have W direction, which is up. And then uh, middle of the box would be 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 in all three directions, right? So this is 0, 0, 0, this is 1, 0, 0, and so on. This is 1, 1, 1, right? Anyway, we get this, we get these two points. I will measure the length of these points, uh, between these points, sorry, so it's going to be distance. Point to point distance and I will um, I will divide that distance divide uh, that distance by a thousand because that's the step size that we're using right so I'll know how many points in the grid will I need to create so a thousand this is static so I should kind of do this is not gonna change a thousand like that okay so we have that then I need to construct a grid of points construct a grid of points where it's gonna be only flat so it's only going to be X and Y uh, so in X direction um, we will use series of numbers series of numbers and the step size is of course going to be a thousand so I'm just going to reuse the same uh, the same number the start is going to be zero and the count is basically going to be uh, from here you know to, to know how many times do we need to uh, repeat this little point right here to kind of keep keep copying it until it reaches the end of the box so I'm just gonna now I know that it's needs to be repeated 50 times so that's the count like that so i connect that to x and i can see that it just you know creates an array of points i could use array why don't i use array doesn't matter we're using the <laughs> doing it this way 
Okay, so we have that, and then I need it to be a grid, right? So I'll flat, uh, sorry, I'll graft the um, the input for x, so that for each of the x value, it gets series of y values, right? And I connect it to y so that it makes a grid. Easy. Okay, we have done that. We have ourselves a grid now. Now let's let's get rid of the bounding box. We don't need to see that. Um, I only want to keep the points that are inside of this curve, right? This this little curve right here, because that's my region from which I'm gonna start growing. So I'm gonna say in curves, point in curves. By the way, plural because in the future I'll want to use more than one curve. So point in curves we use the oh and we need to flatten these out sorry uh, you need to flatten out the construct point output so that everyone's in one big happy list and we just connect those points um into the p input for points in curves okay and then the curve to check with is going to be this curve so I'm going to reference it and set one curve. There we go. And I'm actually going to do like a, a full proof thing where I'm going to project the curve onto a plane. So I'm just going to, if, if I accidentally kind of draw it here, right, this is still going to be projected on XY plane so that it can check if the points are inside of the curve or not like that. All right, so we have that going on. We have the re result or the relationship, and I'm gonna use the relationship to cull, which is basically remove everything that is outside. So cull, relationship pattern, kablamo. We have only the points inside of this curve, right? So as I move the curve, you can see the grid of points follows. And the gap between these points is always a thousand centimeters. All right, now, now, what do we do now? Now we need to move. No, now we need to, yeah, we need to move these points up in Z direction, also by series of numbers. Actually, by same series of numbers that we're using here. So I'm just going to reuse it, right? So I'm just going to use use this like that. Um, but what I'm going to do, it's it, it's getting a little bit funky with all of the all of the wires here. So I'm just going to double click on the on the wire to create a relay, and I'll just drag out a relay here just for the purposes of cleaning it up this does absolutely nothing right so it's just you know a nicer wire okay so we have that you can see that it's not playing that nice uh, but if we graft the move input then we create this kind of a large ass tower so what do i want from the tower i want to get all of the points all of the first points that are above the ground right so for each row of points i want to get the ones that are above the the, the, the ground surface how do we do that um well first of all i need to know which ones are below the ground surface right so from this surface i need to create a closed form a closed shape so i'm just going to say how do you do this? Um, give me the edges, vrep edges, like that. Um, join the edges into a polyline. Those are going to be the naked edges, by the way, the first output. Let's project the joined edges onto, oops, that's the wrong project. Project onto a plane. So we project them onto XY plane, like that. And let us 
move them even further down move in uh, z but in a negative z so z negative by how much by let's say 10 meters as per usual a thousand so i'm just gonna do a thousand like that this just makes sure that everything is inside gonna be inside of the box that's gonna be the bottom of our landscape box by the way if you if you're not sure what the hell are we doing okay so we have our joint curves here in the top and we have our moved curve here i can just loft between these like that and like that to create the perimeter i can also create a surface here in the bottom by just using boundary surface like that and i can then join everything together we rep join like that um so we're gonna be joining the surface the top surface i mean with the perimeter with the bottom surface like that these three right i'm holding the shift key by the way to connect but you probably know this by now um checking what we get as an input i can see that the data tree is all messed up so i'm just gonna right click on the b input here and flatten it out so that everything arrives in one list let's hide the preview of everything here let's actually create a mesh from this so just mesh brep it's gonna be faster uh later so we create a mesh and that is it this is gonna be our group that is called landscape box okay and the top group is gonna be called uh, a column or, or, or point grid column okay so we have that then i need to basically remove all of the points that are inside of the box right inside of the landscape box so i'm gonna use a mesh inclusion tool that is not it mesh inclusion there we go connect it like uh, sorry that's not a mesh that is a mesh and those are the points and then we get the inclusion uh, so basically inside outside statement and with that i can use cull pattern cull pattern to remove all the points that are wait a minute Oh, that's weird that are inside but uh, it doesn't doesn't work why why don't you work 50 50 50 that's all good hmm. or maybe it does work maybe i'm just being stupid no it really doesn't <laughs> it really really doesn't okay time to troubleshoot so we have that 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 seems to be okay let's simplify and simplify this that seems to be a okay that we we get the pattern 50 one mesh okay what in brep what will that give me point in brep and uh, that's the points that's the brep and we use that that works so mesh inclusion something with this is not playing that well okay sure sorry about that we roll back a bit we don't mesh it we use just a brep here and we use point in brep or uh, i i should say point in b reps plural so let, let's do this again from scratch no mesh just a b rep and the move uh, the move points are the p input the b rep is the b rep input we use point in b reps plural right 
you get the output here inside the outside statement and we use use that to call call pattern we use that to call all of the necessary points so you get only the points on the bottom here um, because of that i will right click on the p input of the call pattern and i'll choose to invert and you'll see what it does right once we invert it gives gives us all of the points that are not inside of the brep okay once that is done then i believe with list item with list item we can get the first point on each column which is going to be the point that is closest to the land to the ground right like that easy as that easy as that all right so that 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 is kind of done i would say then 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 we need to kind of start yeah we need to start simulating so this is where it gets uh where it gets funky where it gets interesting um i will create um sunlight analysis system and i will be using uh ladybug or whatever it's called for it so that's our first plugin that we will be using if you don't have ladybug have ladybug ladybug is great um so for it i will create a sun path or i should probably show you where it is it's under visualize data data ladybug sun path this bad boy uh north is sure not not north is east or not <laughs> north is east north is positive y that's fine uh location uh, for location we need to actually construct location and i think it's under here lb construct location and it asks us to give it a name latitude longitude time zone elevation so name is gonna be subscribe just getting it in there you know doing the hustle um latitude and longitude so for that we can actually bam uh, we can actually do maps.google.com okay and i can just pick a point anywhere here right in norway and this is if i right click here i can see the latitude and longitude of the point right um and that works for anywhere in the world so you can get get that information easily um uh, i should have wait do, do do i have it written down here somewhere just a second just a second yeah i have one that is kind of in in um finland uh which would be latitude uh 58.48 four five eight seven like that and longitude would be six point two four five seven three one time zone it's gonna get calculated automatically elevation let's just say elevation is uh, at uh, sea level we don't care okay so we have that it's it's basically creating this little thing city subscribe uh, it's creating um this um, solar sun path um, sh sh showcase i guess um then ours uh, or or hoist i i don't remember what it's called but it's basically like an analysis period for 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 the sun path uh that needs to be also constructed um and we construct that via i don't remember where it, which one it was uh, calculate hoy no construct data okay sure I'm, I'm just gonna oops i'm just gonna type in hoy so that it's gonna be that calculate hoy yeah, yeah, yeah. calculate hoy um 
our hour of the year gotcha gotcha hour of the year so we connect that and we will um analyze for the you know the the, the equinox is it equinox i think it's equinox so spring equinox or autumn equinox uh let's use the all trusted google um spring e equinox norway monday 20th of march okay so march that's gonna be month three day 20th and then for hours we need all 24 hours so i'm just gonna say series of numbers starting from it starts from zero and it ends at 23 so the count is gonna be sorry the count needs to be 24 right because it starts from zero so the count is 24 there we go uh, and we don't care about the minutes we just calculate it for every every hour uh, then 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 i kind of want to now let's just have it here just imagine that this is you know infinitely big i can even increase the scale of this if you if you want uh scale 100 okay that's a little bit too big you make it smaller like that uh, you can also find the center point of the bounding box for instance and get it you know nice um nice and centered but we we, we really don't care so this these points are basically the positions at which the sun is gonna be at during that particular um, day during those particular hours in that particular place it's nice okay so we have that the important part about this is the vectors the vector output that's uh because that's the directions and that's going to be used to check if the voxels shade each other or not all right so we have that done um then i guess it's time to analyze and to get rid of yeah so we need to get rid of all of the points here that initially will be shading each other so first of course i need to construct um and what do i need to construct let's think I can't just construct a voxel mesh. I need to take each point separately. So from this list, I take each point separately, right? And I um, grow the foundation one voxel at a time. And all of the voxels that shade the system will get removed, right? So for that, we need to create a, a loop we're gonna have a loop so that for that we will use anemone plugin if you don't have it download it and it's called loop anemone by the way loop uh, start and loop end. those get connected so that it actually loops and then i will say for now let's uh, while we're testing it the step size of the loop is going to be like five or or uh, zero zero I connect that not to the, step, to the amount of steps it's gonna be zero uh, so it only kind of goes through once i don't want to lock myself out um and everything that the loop is going going to be doing is gonna it's gonna be counting and it's gonna be recording all of the voxels that are not messing up the shading right so i need what do i need I need to somehow from these points i need to create a box do i no from these points all of these points i will flatten them out flatten right so everything's in the same list i have 65 potential places for where the voxels can be placed and i will from this list i will use list item 
list item to get you know for, for instance the first point and i will use the counter to go through all of these points so as the loop kind of keeps repeating it's going to see at which step it is and it's going to go through every single point and it's going to either place it or not place it okay 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 we're, we're, we're getting there so if that happens then we will use um um let's just say every point gets placed for now so i'll use merge like this and the empty list as it is right now is going to be added so let's just call this uh d0 output our data recorder like that and d0 here i'm just right clicking on it by the way and calling it data recorder so the data recorder starts completely empty and actually we need to use clean tree uh, to clean it up because it starts empty so it's gonna say that it's null and we don't want to deal with nulls so we clean the tree and we plug it in like so okay good data recorder uh, starts off empty and in this case we're not we're, we're gonna just <clears throat> add the point to it like that so we're adding this point to this list just flattening the output just just in case um and adding it to the data, data recorder input of loop end so what happens here is at step zero right first point in the list i can show you first point in the list comes in here and gets added to the empty list right and gets passed through the data recorder back into the loop start so then during second repetition second point you know because this increased in number right so we're getting second item from the list second point gets added like that right uh, so this is not empty or uh, anymore it has recorded the first point right so the second point gets merged to the list and so on if i increase this once more then here we have two points and one more is that added and so on right so we're just kind of adding points um okay that 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 will work we'll need to of course have an accurate amount of steps for this but that that's going to be solved so now we need to say when is the point not added right and for that i will need to ask um i will need to ask just a second i'm, I'm, I'm thinking so this result we'll need to ask uh, how many sun hours does each of the faces get right so from ladybug we get visualize data uh where is it sun path windrows cumulative schematics no that's not it analyze i think it's this one it might be this one. No, it's probably not this one. <laughs> ah, there we go. Ladybug directs on hours. That that's the one that we want. So I get this, and basically the way this works, it asks you for vectors. Uh, you know the sun vectors that we get from here. That's very easy. The directions of of the sun. Then it asks you for what's the geometry that is evaluating, and also what's the geometry that is blocking the light but not evaluating right the light so uh and is there anything more the cpu count so for the cpu count uh, you need to know what kind of processor you have safe bet is to use eight uh i know that here i have like more than 12 so i'll just use 12 cpus um just in case it's gonna speed it up just slightly and then uh, the run command is going to be a toggle toggle boolean toggle connect that okay now important part um 
geometry and context and also time step but we'll, we'll deal with that a bit later so for the geometry i'm basically gonna say um, i'm i basically need to create a voxel grid i think so we will use a command that's called voxel mesh if you don't have this tool that is located in pufferfish plugin so just download pufferfish all of the add-ons are on food for rhino they're free and you can just get them right so voxel mesh the way this works is for each point it's going to create a box and all of the boxes are going to be merged into a very very simplistic mesh so i'm just going to test it out like right now so these are the points the 10 points that we have recorded right now <clears throat> and i'll use a plane you know actually xy plane is fine but x y and z size i need to specify what's my voxel size and that is a thousand like that right so it creates this kind of voxel mesh if i go for display preview mesh edges this is how it looks like right um very very simple mesh all right we have ourselves a voxel mesh created um let's think the problem is that it gets created on from, from like the points from which it gets created are on the corner and i want the points to be in the middle so i'm just going to do a very quick quick and dirty fix i'll just move the mesh um, along a vector so i'll construct vector or vector xyz i'll construct a vector and it's basically going to be this value divided by minus two because the vector needs to go backwards so it's a minus and divided by two so if we move it by half in all three directions it's going to be centered so x y z like that if i hide the original now the voxels are centered on my uh, on my points okay we have this that is going to be probably the yeah that's going to be the context for sure right so direct sun hours i'll just drag those in here and that's going to be my context then for the geometry that actually evaluates i can't have i can't have it like that i mean technically i can but wait grid size failed to collect data that's fine uh we can just say grid size like half of the voxel size so 500 and there we go so technically and i toggled this to true to show you uh how, how how it looks like right now uh technically i can just use geometry and context in the same way but the problem is that the bottom of these voxels are always gonna be always gonna get like zero hours of light right that is a little bit problematic and also these areas as well here zero hours of light so we can't just have any geometry we need to have uh that that evaluates we need to have all of the faces that are looking upwards and all of the faces that are looking to the probably to the average of the sunlight vectors right so to some sort of a south direction or we can just say south that's that's fine as well yeah okay let, let, let's do um upwards and faces that are looking towards the south so for upwards we will do hmm, we have our, ourselves a mesh here that means i can get the face normals from it that's easy and i can get um i can deconstruct mesh the construct mesh 
So we have the face information here to later reconstruct it. Uh, then according to face normals, I can ask, does the normal Okay, does the normal, um, what's the angle? What's the angle? What's the angle between the, oops, that's the wrong connection. What's the angle between the normal vector and the, the Z vector upwards? And to the south, it's going to be actually a negative Y vector. So Y negative like that let's just merge these into one one big happy family merge bam bam and just connect that to the angle so what i get now is oh actually i get everything in one list i don't like that so i'll right click on the r output and choose to graft it so that for the z and for the negative y we get separate branches so we'll get two angles as an answer okay let's uh let's 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 sort this list of of angles and let's get the smallest angle possible from it this is in radian, so I'm not showing you this, but I think it should be like, yeah, it should be zeros because there are going to be vectors that are perfectly aligned with this. And I'll just ask, or I could just ask, is the qual? Yeah, we don't even need to do this. We just ask, are the angles equal? Are the angles equal to zero? You know between the vectors meaning that I'm, I'm basically saying give me all of the faces that are looking upwards and that are looking that away right uh, in negative z and then we will just call pattern uh, we'll call with the equality sign here sorry that that goes into the pattern like that so all of the values that are not looking in the directions here are going to be removed i think sorry this is this is a bit tricky should work though and that goes from the list so like that let me just make some some room here so basically I'm, I'm just saying all of the faces that are not looking up or to the right or sorry up or to the south uh should be removed and i flatten all of the faces here and so all, all of the face face information so here we only get the faces that are looking uh, either up or to the south and then i'm just going to construct vector not vector uh, construct mesh construct mesh from the new faces with the old vertices perfect okay so now let's hide everything and these are the faces that we get that's great um, and I'll use those. Actually, let's clean it up a bit. Uh, combine and clean. Just to make it nicer. Um, and I'll use those to evaluate. And now, now you can see that the direct sun hours, um, even this face gets eight sunlight hours. That's important. Okay. Whew, we're, we're, we're going through this. We're blasting through like it's nothing. Okay. Now, I need to say... I need to ask... Are there any of these faces that have... Um, mm, less than 3 hours, that receive less than 3 hours of sunlight? And for, I can get that from here, from the results. So I can ask, are the results larger? 
um, not smaller, larger than three. Like that. Okay. And then the answer to that is ESDR, true. Okay, good. Then I will say not. <laughs> not means it, it just basically just flips everything. Oops, uh, that's the wrong one. It it it, it flips the, the answers. So what was true becomes false. I just need them to be flipped. Because now if either one of these is true, that means I have at least one face that is that receives less than three hours of light. So I'll just use mass addition of the statements because false is zero and true is one always, right? So I can just add them up. And if my result is equal to zero, then that means we're Gucci. That means we don't have any, um, any faces in the simulation that receive less than three hours of light. So after this, after the quality has been tested, I can use this answer to cull Cull, what do we cull? We cull this list item, this, this point that we add to test if the structure uh, still doesn't have any voxels that are that receive less than three hours of sunlight or if it does. So if, if it's suddenly we add a point and it changes the behavior of the structure so that it doesn't get enough sunlight then that point is not gonna be added right so we take this list item point and it's gonna be an ugly long wire but it is what it is we take that and we drag it all the way to cull pattern let me expand this so that you are kind of understanding what 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 i'm doing and also let me just squish this a bit while you're trying to follow there we go. Mm, maybe something like that. Just trying to make it as small as possible and failing. <laughs> okay, like that. Maybe this can go, oh my God, here. Sure, this is the best I can do. Um, which means that cull pattern is here. So we need another merge right because this one just was just to test um if if the point is correct so i will create uh, so so it doesn't go to the data recorder here this merge doesn't i need a separate one i need a merge cull pattern goes into merge like that that's perfect and clean tree this one goes into d1 of merge like that and that goes into data recorder. We don't forget to flatten out the output of the merge. Don't forget it. Uh, it, it just cleans up the tree. Uh, basically, we don't want it to be a data tree. So we just uh, force everything into one list. And now, technically, if I, what, sorry. Sorry about that. Just a second. Where's my, there we go. Um, now, technically, if I reset or toggle, well, sorry, button, if I reset the simulation like that, and of course, start increasing the repetitions, for instance, here it receives 12 hours. That's great. 12 hours. Now there's a whole gradient because suddenly this gets a little bit shaded. Bam, bam, bam. But everything kind of work, works out well. So now we need to run the simulation for every single one of those points. So for list item, uh, sorry, for the uh, loop number of repetitions, I'll just say list length. And I'll just ask, how many points do we have here, right? It's 65. Um, so with list length, I get 65 steps. Click that and it just keeps going. We it didn't remove a single object from here. That's fine. But for instance, if I say that it needs to have seven hours, 
right? Of, of sunlight at least. And then I restart the simulation. You can see that some uh, areas were reduced. And now we have only voxels that have eight hours of light. Okay. So we don't want to go that aggressive. We will keep this at three hours for now. But we have ourselves a starting uh generation right this is the generation from which we're gonna we're gonna start Ooh, okay we need to what do we need to do i'm gonna group this all of this Let's make a group out of it and I'm going to say data dam. I'm going to create a data dam here, like that. This is going to be a very comp, not complex, but a long script, right? So data dam, let's say blob outline. Let's give it a color that we will notice, like that. Um, let's make another one. Oops. Like that. Whoa, that didn't work. There we go. Uh, also, blob, uh, something like that. I'll notice it easy more more easily. Okay. Now we are finally reaching the step where it's it's gonna get not tricky, but where we're going to. Uh, create the, like grow the city so how does this happen well first things first it's gonna be do we make a loop first or do we make it later it's gonna be looped either way and it's gonna be a nested loop no we loop it later okay so let, let, let's start with a simple let's uh, uh, a simple building of one more layer above one more level above okay um basically from this what we get is um a bunch of points right the output here is 63 points that stayed i will move all those 63 points up so how do we build this we move them up by a thousand we always use a step size of a thousand so all of the points are now <clears throat> above and i will i will say that each of these points the way we grow it can grow to the left to the right forward backwards and diagonally by one cell right so if you have a point here um, in in your basement floor then your first floor is going to be point here here potential point here 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 and of course right above right so we're, we're basically just creating um, a logic of it being able to grow outwards to spread out okay so that's that's what we're gonna what we're gonna do to do that, I'm just going to use rec, rectan, rectangular array. Um, the things that are going to get copied are my points. And the cell size is going to be a rectangle uh, that will have 1000 by 1000 units in X and Y. That's very easy. Uh, and x and y count is going to be um, 3, right? Wait, point, and then we do 1, 2, 3. No, it needs to be 2. Oh, but wait, uh, how does this work? Um, if we do point count 3 for x, this is the original. It adds 2 more. Okay, so it, it needs to be 3 for x and 3 for y. The problem is that now the array 
array is offset by one uh, not unit but one cell because it goes to the left or, or to the right um, and upwards so instead we will move them back move here back back backwards how do we move them back um, that's gonna be again vector XYZ like that and by how much I believe it's just gonna be a negative in X and in Y of the same a thousand right yeah it's just gonna be a thousand backwards so now if I look at this from from above yeah yeah we get this kind of an offset of one cell for all sides uh, there's a problem though and the problem is called uh, there's a bunch of duplicates here a bunch of du duplicate points so I'm just gonna say remove duplicate points like that and I'll just flatten this out that is not flattened that is flattened I'll just flatten everything out so that the duplicates are removed okay we are Gucci uh, at least at least with this portion right then um, let's just visualize them I think do we visualize them I think we should visualize them yeah let's just visualize them so let's create a box um, center box no domain box let's do a domain box like that and the domain for each of these boxes on these points is gonna be 500 or sorry minus 500 to 500 minus 500 to 500 because we want to keep it um, centered like that so those are our boxes this is what we were constructing and right now they are if i were to do list item and a slider 0 to 25 doesn't matter and a slider just to show you they're very very cleanly you know pop, 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 as uh, very cleanly assembled right um that that's because of the array um i'm going to actually do a jitter for them which basically is just going to randomize the indices of these boxes so now um, let me show you again now they're all over the place right there's there's no sequence to them uh, I feel like that's gonna make make it a little bit more organic in terms of in terms of growth okay now we have a bunch of boxes here that we don't need list item we will but later uh, we have a bunch of boxes here guess how <laughs> guess how we um g guess how we decide which box will stay and which box will disappear we already did this part right it's literally this so we will just be repeating it and i could just copy this and then paste it and Kind of connect the wires cleanly but I, I feel like i should repeat this so that you you kind of understand uh better what 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 we're gonna be dealing with so i'll create a loop start again and loop end that connect those two again i'll just use like five slider with five steps for now a button to reset like that and okay and that, that's that's gonna be that so uh, we will have uh, actually for for this do we take two Just a second I'm uh, thinking real real fast thinking real real fast um, no we don't need to take two okay so this is gonna be a recorder again right as we did before 
going to be a recorder we're going to use uh, the sunlight uh, sun daylight analysis thing wherever it was uh, ladybug visualize no analyze direct sun hours there we go this one we're gonna use the same vectors so goddamn that's a long long ass wire it's gonna be the same vectors from you know the sun path just connect them like that then we will use okay so geometry context is gonna be tricky cpu count is not tricky 12 run toggle that's easy we run this and everything else is gonna be kind of similar oh yeah grid size 500 there we go um so in terms of geometry and context uh what, what's our geometry and what's our context our context is gonna be um Hmm. Sorry, I'm, I'm 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 thinking. So we have a bunch of boxes here, right? We get a bunch of boxes. So I'll I'll use. But we don't really need to make them into boxes, do we? Just thinking out loud. It's enough to just have them as points. I just use this to visualize them to, for you. So we will not use domain box. I'm just gonna have them as points but we will jitter the points right so get rid of the main box and just have jitter here uh, value um, like these are still points I can just kind of say point um, point and I'll just name this um, current generation of points right and this is gonna be sorry where, 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 where yeah those so i i need to create a one more point component here that just arrives from 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 the bottom right and that is gonna be a previous generation of points uh generations previous generations of points okay we have previous and we have current um and from the current generation we will use list item uh to get a point with the counter just like we did here as well you know list item we got the counter we got a point from a list right let's disable preview of a few things so that they're not in the way like that i'm only going to be looking at the at the elements that are here on 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 the script so we have our current generation and our previous generation of points right one above the other uh, from current generation we only take one point and we will be adding it merge sorry I'm, I'm 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 just thinking out loud or, or thinking quietly so we will be adding the new point right uh, we will be adding it with the previous generation of points like that and also we'll be adding the recorded points right so if, if in, in once this loop kind of goes it's going to kind of keep adding a structure so we need to add that as well so for this we need to use clean free i always do that clean tree and we add that as d3 
right now it's empty because we haven't recorded anything yet all right this is gonna work this is gonna work so we have that and it's a little bit messy with the wires so let's let's clean up the wires a bit like that okay so this is gonna be flatten this out this is gonna be all currently have points that need to be currently evaluated okay good 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 Whew, that was for some reason trickier than than, um, than what i expected um let's do voxel mesh again let's do a thousand for xyz again let's move the mesh back into you know wh wh where it needs to be so negative um or not even negative construct uh construct vector why the oh uh, vector xyz i keep forgetting that it's vector xyz like that and let's 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 um take the thousand and divide it by minus two right okay minus two like that now we have the voxels in the correct position plus the new the new voxel from here that is very important okay so these are going to be uh, yeah, this is straight up our context, right? And if I run this to the geometry again, you can see, you know, that evaluation just happens. The problem is, again, the bottom. So let me remove this from geometry and let's separate out the, the faces as we did before. Um, face normals of the mesh and deconstruct mesh. I'll, I'll go fast now because uh, we're repeating this so we deconstruct mesh we get the face normals we will evaluate it against z and negative y vector we merge these into one list for for evaluation <clears throat> uh, graft and graft oh sorry no we don't graft that we graph the output like that uh we measure the angle that is not the one angle between these vectors and the the normals of the mesh and then we ask is the angle equal is the angle equal to zero and if the answer is yes then 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 cull Uh, curl pattern that's the pattern that's what we call no sorry not that's what we call we get the faces we flatten out the faces here into one big list then we do construct mesh and just connect everything like vertices going to vertices faces going to faces we have constructed a mesh. We need to clean it up though. Combine and clean. And now we're done. Okay. Now we evaluate this. And you can see that the biggest shading that's happening right here is... Wait. Why is that negative Y there? Why? Negative Y. No, never mind. That's that's all good. Um so 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 the biggest shading is 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 um happening right here and that's five hours okay let's hide a bunch of things because it's annoying but we have ourselves the results and i just ask are the results larger than three larger than three um not 
So we, we flip it so that ones became zeros and zeros became ones. And we mass uh, do mass addition, basically asking, are there any ones in here? Because if you add a bunch of zeros, you're going to get a zero, right? Equality. Zero. Is it equal to zero? And the answer to that is going to be, uh, in this case, is going to be false or sorry, it's going to be true, meaning that call pattern will let through the data. So it's going to let through our list item, uh, the particular mesh that we were testing. Just like that. And then we use merge to add this element to the recorder, uh, whatever it's called, the recorder uh, input, right? The, the, the recorded loop, and we will be adding it to the clean tree. So it's, it's long wires. Let me, let me try to use as much of the screen as possible. It's long wires, but it's basically clean tree connects to D1 and cal parent connects to d2 the same thing as what we did here right very very similar the reason why we're separating this is because for this i will add additional functionality a little bit later okay so now again for current generation of points i need to measure list length to basically know through how many i need to go go through i connect that to n and it just goes, right? Just calculates and adds the points or, or boxes where they should be added. How cool is that? Let's look at it again. You can see it like these boxes appear, right? So these are fresh, uh, new, freshly added boxes. I can even do, um, I can even do this to show you. To show you them better. There we go. Those those are the newly added boxes. Okay. Problem. Um what what if we need to do now another level? right this needs to be this loop needs to be inside of a bigger loop that goes through levels and records each level um i tried it with uh how's it called fast loop i tried it with octopus loop i tried it with um, the other one uh hoop sneak neither one of these are stable enough uh, for this to work so there is going to be some manual shenanigans with uh, data uh, data dams and increasing one step at a time like the levels one step at a time but i i feel like that is not that big of a deal uh, so that's what we're gonna do okay we have ourselves uh, one generation so what do we do we create loop start and loop end again right and basically all of this this whole loop and i should probably yeah let's let's clean it up so this is going to be a group of, of its own and this loop except for that it's going to be a group of its own like that just so that we have everything kind of separated and everything's kind of uh, cleanly defined. Okay, so now for this, we need to connect them. Then here for the repetition, I'm just going to say like repeat it once uh, or, or sorry, repeat it uh, zero times. For now, like that. And we are going to have two, um, um, two loops running. One is going to be like D0, for instance, is going to be 
current gen d0 current gen right and then i'll click on the plus sign here and here we just add one one input here and i'll call d1 recorded gen and d1 here recorded gen okay and i, I need a button to to reset this or else it's gonna complain okay not, not now we're happy um so everything that we do in this area right here we need to put in this loop and keep repeating it for every uh, every floor right we're basically going to build it up in floors so let's uh, let's drag the loop <clears throat> to the start first to see <clears throat> apologies <clears throat> to see what needs to be um, what needs to be repeated we'll not use a counter in in this case we'll just use the zero and the one inputs so as we start uh, both d0 and d1 will have the same input uh, from from the foundation block right that's going to be our current generation and that's going to be the only recorded generation that we have so d0 and d1 are basically the same right we are just recording them okay then instead of just um, feeding it like that to move we will use the the the, the, the uh, current generation and feed it, it like that so basically all, all it does is just this wire now goes through the loop start like this also i'll i'll, I'll do the same with for, between current generation and previous generations of points like that easy okay so that's done then for recorded uh, generation uh, that is going to be um, sorry I think I made the boo boo undo control Z let's think about this um, previous generations of points that does need to come from recorded right because that's all of the previous ones sorry so that does come from recorded like this yeah, yeah. and the current uh, generation gets kind of grown a bit and then uh, that is going to be the one that's going to be questioned you know if, if the voxels should appear or shouldn't appear in it while the previous one is already locked so it, it goes from here okay that i'm getting tired i'll need to take a break uh pretty pretty soon um either way this this should now kind of work and the only the only thing that we need to add here in the back is gonna be the output of this by the way why is the output like to ew that shouldn't be too uh Why was the output to clean clean tree gave, gave it a, gave a messy output? Okay, sure. So uh, in our initial loop, our first loop, um, merge our output needs to be flattened. Just keep that in mind. Okay, so now um, our current generation, I believe that is. Yeah, that just straight up comes in from the loop end here because this becomes, you know, the the, the the voxels that were placed become the current generation. The recorded generation, though, is going to be, again, you know, the beautiful merge like that that connects with the uh, so so recorded generation goes in here and let, let me just think about this for a second recorded generation that never produces an empty list so we don't need to clean the tree that's great so recorded generation d1 output connects to merge d1 here and 
these points just keep getting added to it, right? So we're recording it um, just in case I flatten this out. And just in case we can also remove uh, duplicate points. And that gets added to recorded generation, like so. All right. I think, I think we are, we're almost, almost there. Feels like we are. Okay, uh, let's, let's make, let's make D1 a bit nicer. So domain box, I'm just going to copy this. Let's visualize D1 with um, minus uh, 470 to 470. And let's make the swatch, color swatch, black. Like that. So all recorded generations get their kind of nice little color. Um, and we kind of need a data dam right here because we'll be doing it step by step. Okay, so let's add. Let's add the data dam here and replace it. So, so let's not let information flow through unregulated. Uh, let's add a data dam right here. And let's make it like red and uh, blob outline so that it's easily findable. Okay. Disable preview of literally everything except the two preview nodes. And let's just see. Let's just see what's 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 gonna happen. Okay, so how do we how do we use this? This is already calculated. So we have generation one, and this is in the way, this is in the way. We still are looking at too many things. Okay. Um I will reset the button here and technically I shouldn't need to reset it here, but I will. And it just places the voxels for me and it makes sure that they never, um, they never reach three, uh, below three hours of daylight. And if they do, it doesn't place the voxel, right? So now this is done, like this second generation is done. So I press play here and it kind of feeds it in uh, to loop end, which means that loop start is ready to go for next generation. And it does. Okay. So it adds more voxels here. And then I press play again just wonder why uh, like that's 74 boxes that's so it's it's recording every every box here hmm we'll need to we'll, we'll need to investigate that but it is it is correct in in how it uh, how it calculates Let's delete that for a second and just take a look here. So that is correct. We don't even need that 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 preview. Let's uh, did I press the yeah I press the data down. Let's increase this once more. Okay, so that keeps getting added. Wonderful. We press the data dam again. We increase it here again. Okay, so now we need to kind of get, well, we, we'll do that later. There's there, we will need to do a few optimizations because you can see that it gets a little bit slow. 
And of course, once we start dealing with really large uh, structures, that's going to get real, real slow, real fast, right? So here I'm, I'm just kind of, I get my uh, repetitions uh, slider for the large loop next to the data dam so that I don't need to move the uh, so that I don't need to move the, the, the view too much. Press play. That gets transferred. Uh, repeat five. And I kind of want to. Well, it's 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 kind of easy for me to see that w when it stops calculating. But that seems to be doing the trick. Yeah. That is most definitely, uh, you know, following the sunlight and creating. And you can see the evaluation here. It's four hours. So that works. Press play. That gets transferred. We have all of the boxes. Okay. Let us have a break because my mind is starting to skip. Let's have a break and then I will, I will pick it up um later later today for you it's gonna be a second so um i'll see you in a second all right i'm back so where were we how do we finish this up let us take a gander okay so i will just drag down the repetitions of my big loop uh back to where they should be right here and we'll kind of clean everything up uh, as we go. So first things first, like the big loop as it's calculating. Well, let's go back to zero repetitions, reset it. Yeah. So the big loop as it's recal as it's calculating, I kind of need to see um, how long I will need to wait, right? Because it takes a while to go through all of the possible variations that are shown right here, right? So uh, to go through all of these points. And the larger the structure grows, the longer it takes, right? So I think, yeah, this guy is the culprit, right, of it. And basically what I can do is I can say... This is all of the steps that it's going to take, and this is how many it took. So if I subtract from here, from the all of the steps, if I subtract the steps that it took, then the number, the answer, the number is going to be how many steps are left. So I can just change the color of this to white. This is just a panel, by the way. Um, and font, I can do a custom font with larger size, let's say 15 points. Um, Arial, Arial, Arial black. There we go. And let's just see if we can. Can we get rid of the unnecessary, like. Uh, stream content, uh, wrap items, special codes, draw paths, draw indices. We get rid of those. And also I can now make it centered. Great. So this is basically our counter for, you know, how many, how many steps are left. So if I reset this, you can see that it's, it's now counting downwards from 100 and whatever it was to zero once this is zero that means i can reset or not reset sorry click the data dam and you know do the second pass here okay so we get that statistic that's important another thing is right now all of these guys are calculating well actually let's check one thing because i have one curve here what if i draw another one let's say Let's draw one right here, another one, right? And let's get both of them referenced in. So where do we reference them? That is 
a good question uh, somewhere at the start let's find it there we go there there's the curves right click set multiple we have them both here um let's just see how does this look like that looks fine but we do need to reset restart the initial loop simulation so that it goes through all of the voxels and you know places them correctly yep uh that is done now i press the play button we got this going let's reset go back to perspective view come on perspective view okay so both curves seem to work uh th this one is below like that both curves seem to work that's great um except that i mean the more we get the uh, the slower it's gonna become so i want to have like a analysis radius so when we analyze if the new point creates a shadow then it's only going to be around a certain kind of distance right so basically basically in the small loop that we have here let's make this a bit bigger in the small loop we have ourselves you know the point uh, where is it a point which is being tested right and we go through every point and we can measure the distance between this point and each point on the existing structure the structure that has been already approved right those are the center points here so i can measure distance like that center point a point to the center point and where do we put this um okay so we need to make some room for it so i'll i'll just say that the room for it is gonna be right right here like that okay so we have the distances right and i can basically say is, are the distances larger or smaller larger or smaller i think um right let's double check smaller yeah are the distances smaller then let's say 100 meters 100 or sorry 10 thousand centimeters is 100 meters like that we get the answer you know smaller uh or, or larger here and we get uh, a bunch of answers here so uh and and those answers are basically in in terms of the direction while these ones are in in terms of the distance right so i can say and create a gate for and and then use equality here and here sorry equality connect equality and smaller than uh, so my distance filter and my angle filter i connect them with gate and use that to curl the pattern and now you can see that everything that is beyond um whatever this is uh give me a second anything that is further away from the point that we analyze further away than 100 meters is not going to be included in the analysis if this is smaller you can see that the analysis becomes smaller so we can even do like 50 meters if we want to right I will keep this at 100 meters because I feel like, you know, it's 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 a good kind of good good balance, right? Anything that's further out than 100 meter, meters will probably not affect the, um, like th this point right here will not affect like these elements as much. All right, so we have that. That's good. That's good. We have the structure there. 
well actually we should keep this keep this open but i don't really care about the uh, legend here so i'm just going to look at the mesh so i'm gonna create a mesh component here like that drag this out and hide the sun hours component so it's only the mesh that i am looking at okay so that is done then in terms of the domain box feels like um do you really want to see this yeah uh, hmm, probably yeah this seems seems to be okay but then let's let's look at the newly created ones like so like that with a different kind of a color so let's say something like that um Right, let me color this. We we're not using green, so I'm gonna use green for this. There we go. Okay, so this is like the current generation that's being placed, and the black is the previous generations, and then the colorful part is where it's being analyzed. All right, so that is kind of. Are we done? Feels like we're done. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're done. Let's grow something. Okay, so we, we have the two, uh, two, two areas here. I'm actually going to bring them closer together. Like that. I will reset the first... Um, whatever you call it, like the... The first loop. And reset it. Now it's done. I'm gonna press play now we're here gonna reset this one and this one and now it's going okay slowly it's gonna build it all up and as it's building it of course it's you know uh, it has the influence radius in which it kind of calculates and we can see how many steps it makes and then and, and whatnot great so it's it 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 has done the first part let's press the data dam here increase the repetitions to one and continue so we need to, like all of this is neat, but we need to have everything in the same place so that I don't, um, so that I don't need to w worry about ac ac accidentally pressing the wrong button and so that everything is kind of neat and tidy, uh, tidy. So I'm just going to drag everything that I need in there. like that there we go and now i can press play here increase the repetitions to two look at it being count counted down and once it's done then i press play again and get you know third repetition and fourth and then and, and so on also, we need to double check why is it, why is green overtaking everything? Because this is recorded, 141 elements. And what's 219, 120. Let's see, if I press play. And increase repetitions to three. Yeah, it, it adds more, but the green for some reason is... Hmm. Something's off. We are recording these guys. 150. And we're passing through the call list here. Okay, let's let's uh, let's go back. 
to repetition zero. We'll, uh, I'll clean up the wire mess in, in just a second. We need to make sure that all of this is neat. So this is now set to negative 344. What's up with that? Like that. We get 211 and we're at 555. Got it. So we need to reset that. Okay. Disable that. So slowly, <clears throat> we need to we need to kind of troubleshoot it a bit. Okay, this gets enabled. That's good. Reset. This gets enabled. Reset. So this all works, and that 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 looks fine. So I, I don't think we draw in black. We don't draw the output here because it makes no sense. Um, it makes sense to draw all previous generations from here, from loop start, right here. So this is where we say record the generations going here, like that. Hmm. Then, current generation will be added, uh, will be added here after the clean tree. Okay. Like that. And this will be actually red for now. Yeah, you can see the red. Uh, elements appear. We have that working. Let's let's change this from red to green. Different shade of green. Let's watch it count. Okay, so once count is done, then we do the data dam thing. Blam. So data dam passes through the information in here yeah in here duplicate points are removed and then it goes back in here so technically if i change the repetition to one now it should why is that green okay give me a second okay i think i figured it out so when we reset the oh, you need a button there when we reset the simulation here here it doesn't get rid of what has been recorded it just keeps adding to the recorded list right so this becomes um bad like it it, it breaks down so what we need to do is we need to trigger somehow um, the, the the recording of it and the easiest way to do it um, I believe would be to just create a new input this is for the inner loop by the way new input for d1 here and for d1 here like that and parse through the current generation of points like that through here and here so instead of having wait why is this no that's correct that's correct input l fail to collect data d1 goes in here d1 connects to here okay so once we have passed it through instead of directly like that it should be it should now every time um, the current generation of points changes here it should re-trigger a new kind of re-recording of information i'm not 100 percent certain but i believe that's how how it's going to to work so let's let's just try 
let's try again okay repetitions zero zero repetitions reset everything okay this is not counting why is this not counting hello oh my god oh this is orange why is this orange d1 fill to collect data uh, so what is D1? D1 is actually, yeah, yeah. So current generation of points needs to cycle inside of the loop, between loop start and loop end, right? So D1 here actually needs to connect to D1. It's weird. Uh, and the wire is going to be just straight up from D1 to D1. But that's going to force a loop. So let's let's try again. Reset this. Is it resetting? Yes, every time I press this, that's resetting. So it's gonna go through the 200 and whatever steps. Let's wait. I really hope that this is gonna work. If this works, we're done. <laughs> if this doesn't, then we troubleshoot further. But basically, we force uh, the voxels to be in the loop and every time the voxel collection changes the loop will restart so now if i press play here and then change this to one perfect this gets moved uh, the green voxels get moved to the black voxels to record the generation and then the the new green voxel group is being generated wonderful okay so now let's clean this up number so here repetitions go into a number and here they connect to uh, the loop start and the reason why i'm doing this is because now i can change this to have wire display set to hidden so now this slider doesn't have a wire and it just goes in here. It's wireless. Then um, the count also right click wire display hidden. Then data dam. Guess, guess what? Wire display hidden. Wire display hidden. Uh, wait. What? Oh, okay. So it needs to go in here. like that wire display hidden was it the correct one no it wasn't so it's not d2 apologies here and also for the current generation wire display hidden okay you know just slightly slightly cleaner here if you select them you can still see them of course but I'm just gonna I'm just making it a bit a bit cleaner. Okay, this is our kind of tool, right? Tool that we use. So we once this is at zero, we press the play button, we change this to one like number that's one bigger. We wait for this to calculate, and then we are happy. So as it's growing, you can see that it's always going to grow outwards, right? So it's going to be a reverse pyramid. Uh, what if you want to restrict the growth of it inside of a, some sort of a given form, given shape? Well, you can do that as well. So let's just say our shape is going to be... I, I press the escape key to cancel the... Uh, Cancel the making. Let's say our shape is going to be a sphere. It's a sphere in which we grow. It can be any kind of closed shape, doesn't matter. Let's, for, for sake of speed, let's convert this to a mesh. So a mesh sphere. And let's say that all points... Actually, we need to kind of find a pretty good place where we um, where we check if the points, the voxels are inside or outside of the sphere. 
Uh, so where do we put it? I guess they can be put right here. Before the jitter, right? After we remove the duplicate points, we also ask, are they inside of this mesh? Mesh inclusion. That's the mesh. Those are the points. So that's in the big loop, right? Those are the points. And the inclusion gives us true or false statements, which we can cull. Uh, we can use pattern, cull pattern. And we remove all points that are that are outside of the mesh, right? So basically, these voxels will not be able to grow outside, and that gets jittered, right? So it's it's a little bit of a detour here, but this just kind of makes it so that when the structure grows, it grows inside of our little sphere. Now we're done. Well, with the initial initial form. So as this is cal calculating, let's let's work on the um, representation of it a little bit. So basically, these voxels that are created, they are like the nice nice little voxels that we can use to to, to visualize like a city, right? Like a form of the city that doesn't shade itself. Um, play three so that form all of these right here all of these voxels in that form uh, can be drawn as our custom marching cubes um, and also they should trim away the landscape we will do that in the next video but for this one I will make um, like a marching cubes script uh not script but marching cubes mesh that will follow the form of these voxels so let's let's take a look let's create a <clears throat> data dam here for d0 or d1 record the generation for d1 let's create a data dam let's actually keep growing it play button for let it continue um, so we have the data time here. Let's press play so that it kind of gives us the, 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 the voxels. Um, and let us... Let us create a voxel uh, mesh. Just like that. Is that done? Oh, that's done. Okay, play, five, keep going. You can see that this one stopped, gr almost stopped growing. It grows with an offset from this one. Uh, that is expected. That's what I would expect to happen. Okay, we have, we are creating a voxel mesh. That's going to be a thousand by a thousand by a thousand, right? And as per usual, we move it with vector x, y, z. You know this by now. Divide it by minus 2. Like that. Okay, so we have the voxel mesh in the correct position. And then I'm going to use WBV vertices component. That is not it. WBV to get all of the points of the mesh. Right? So it's basically a grid of points um, that, that we're gonna be that we're gonna be using, right? Uh, so we're dealing with points here, and then what about these points? Let's, let's see. So the coordinates of these points are funky. They're not at like... Um, let me show you the coordinates. They always 
uh, start at 500, right? Or or they have like 500 units of increment. I kind of want them for for meshing purposes. I want them to be at full numbers, like 39,000 or 40,000 instead of 39,500. But that might not be a problem. First, let's check. It feels like it's going to be a problem. So to create a, a mesh, uh, to create a mar marching cubes mesh, I will use a cocoon plugin. That's again, food for Rhino. Uh, cocoon. And basically, it's going to ask me for charge objects and cell size. Our charge objects are going to be points. So charge point or point charge like that and here I've, I've done numerous numerous tutorials on this so if you're a newcomer to the channel welcome welcome we use this quite often um, if you're not sure what this does I suggest looking at my uh, which one marching cubes algorithm tutorials any one of them uh, something that has to do with cocoon and you will see a uh, game of life game of life tutorial set uh, talks about this in depth so check out that and you will understand why do we do the things that we do with this we don't have time we're way past two hours at this point so i'm not going to explain okay so our point charge is of course our points our radius is going to be the same radius as what we're using for the voxel mesh so that's going to be a thousand that's the step size that we constantly use our strength is going to be one because one is a good number um our iso value is actually going to be 0.5 like that and our cell size is you guessed it that's going to be a thousand again and that's definitely a constant that we use and execute we just toggle this bad boy to true and nothing gets created Yeah, that's yeah yeah okay so nothing gets created because our step size is a thousand but all of our coordinates have like half of an increment so 500 of an increment so we need to move all of our points with a vector uh vector xyz no that is not that vector Oh my god, vector x, y, z. Why is there const why construct vector is not a thing? And with 500 points, uh, by 500 units, sorry. X, y, z. So now all of our coordinates are full numbers. And now if we feed it into point charge, it creates a mesh for us. As we want it to then uh, once it's created a mesh we need to move the mesh back so i'm just going to move it again move the created mesh with this vector only that it's going to be reversed you know so we move it and we move it back uh, and we move it just because we need it to be in, the coordinates to be in full numbers so that it calculates properly Okay, once that is done, uh, we get ourselves a mesh, we unweld the mesh, basically to make it, um, to make it um, sharper, uh, the shading, this is just for the preview, to make the shading sharper, we use degrees, so you right click on the angle and you choose degrees, and we use custom preview with a color swatch, doesn't matter, we, we can use that. And that is our little mesh. So now if I press the data dam here, you can see it grows a bit more. And then I can go and press the play button here and number six. That one will keep growing. And if I press it, press play again, you know, we can keep, keep, keep it growing. Uh, the reason why I'm not, well, actually, do we need the data? We can just do do this directly here. So it updates automatically. That should be nice. That should be fine. Okay, so we have ourselves the nice little mesh here. 
if you want to visualize the um if you want to visualize the, the the actual shading of this mesh what you've seen in the thumbnail uh you just borrow uh direct sun hours you know at this point i'm just gonna control c control v this oh uh, mm, uh, mm, uh, mm. control z <laughs> undo undo let's try again copy paste ah there we go now the group is not following like that and we just use this mesh the unwelded mesh as our geometry as well as our context and we get the shading and also if you want the legend for it you can see the hours here uh and of course it's gonna get zero hours in on this um sides on the on the sides on these polygons but here it's yeah you know it's pretty damn orange so we're happy we have ourselves a working a working structure right which we can evaluate with this um tool right with this node but for now i'm gonna keep it hidden because we still want to grow it so press the play button increase the number again seven it goes through 200 of potential places for the uh for the vertices not vertices for the points for the voxels and you know it it, it just keeps keeps on growing now that's a script right okay i think there's plenty of things to to kind of investigate plenty of things to work with here um a little bit of a challenge to follow along i understand it's crazy in terms of the complexity i feel like it can be optimized if you can do certain amount of coding right because this is all done just with uh grasshopper but if you can do c sharp then looping is going to be or nested loops uh, are easier to implement but if you paid close attention then you most definitely will be able to do this if not if you're lazy and you just want the script patreon <laughs> become a patreon supporter I'm, I'm plugging this way too hard okay I'll, I'll see you in the next one later